Hey guys, double wide six here. I'm working on a little uh, home light leaf blower. Um, basically, I got this thing in the summer and uh, I wasn't able to get it running. Um, I cleaned the carburetor, checked for spark, all that stuff, checked the compression, and uh, you know, put the carburetor back in. And I, you know, I think I got the thing to fire, but it just wouldn't run right. So I put it up in the attic and uh, things are getting a little slow here so I figured I would uh, do a little work on this and try and figure out what's going on so those of you that are regular subscribers you may already know that I got this mighty vac it's a pressure and vacuum tester and uh, I'm using it to troubleshoot this small engine so that's kinda what this video is about so I already made a video how to use the Mighty Vac to test a two cycle carburetor that you can find on my channel. Um, this particular test, what I'm going to show you guys how to do is test a gas tank. So we'll be using the Mighty Vac to both pressurize and vacuum test a fuel tank. So we're taking a look at the lines coming into the fuel tank. Basically, I have one line that has a fuel filter on it, and there's also a return line. So the line with the fuel filter in the tank, we're going to plug that one off. So I'm just taking a plug from my Mighty Vac kit, and I'm sealing that up just like that. Now I'm going to take my Mighty Vac, and we're going to hook it up to this return line. So take that and hook that up there and what we should be able to do is on the pressure setting pump this thing up to 7 psi and as you can see it's not pumping up so apparently we have a leak somewhere now that we have it set up what I'm going to do is spray some soapy water on this thing and trying to pump it up and we want to look for bubbles I thought I'd see a leak right here at the fuel lines but well there's looks like a little bubble fuel lines aren't leaking bad it's leaking somewhere else I'm going to try the uh, fuel cap so I'll spray that see if it's leaking out the vent it's not so uh, what I'm going to do now is check the threads on the unit so we'll flip this thing over somehow and it's kind of common to have problems with the threads they get beat up over time and this thing so you soap up your, your cap like that and we'll pressure it and we found our leak so the bubbles are coming out so there's either a problem with the cap or the threads so we're going to check that for damage so I took a rag I cleaned up the threads a little bit and they look good you know sometimes they're cross threaded and you get a leak there um, Luckily, I have an extra cap, so I'm going to try this cap. This looks pretty good. It's from a home light as well. This is the cap that was on there. Doesn't look that bad, but I don't know. Oh, actually, I, there looks like there's a little tear up there up top on that gasket, so maybe that could be our problem. But anyhow, we're going to try this one and we'll see if we can get our 7 PSI alright so here's the test with the new cap and now it's starting to pump a little bit but it's only getting up to about 3 or 4 PSI and if you look really closely at these fuel lines I can see they're starting to bubble so with a little more pressure the fuel lines are bubbling so I'm going to replace these old fuel lines that were on here. So I put on a new cap. I pumped this thing up and uh, I still had leaks. And uh, basically I determined 
that the problem's not actually the cap, it's actually something with the threads in the tank. So that it was still bubbling there, and I'm pretty sure my cap's good. So went into my parts. I happen to have the exact same gas tank, and uh, I put that good cap on, and uh, I'm able to pressurize this one. It takes a lot of pumps because you're filling up the, the whole tank to 7 PSI, so I don't know, it might take 30 pumps, and right there I am. I'm at 7, and it's clearly holding 7. So that's good, it's showing me that I have no leaks. So our next test is to make sure that we have the right gas cap for the tank. And you know, it, it should release all the air pressure in half to three quarters of a turn. So there you go, I only turned it about, I don't know, a quarter of a turn, and you can hear all the air release out of there. So that's the second thing that you wanna check on your tank. So the last test that we're actually gonna run on this tank is we're gonna check the, the fuel cap to make sure it vents properly. The way these things vent, there's basically a one-way valve here. So air is allowed to enter in through the cap, but any air from inside the tank cannot go out of the cap so it's a one-way valve there and basically the way these things work is the carburetor on the unit draws fuel as fuel goes into the carburetor air comes into the tank and uh, there's basically what you have is a low pressure situation when the fuel leaves the tank you have low pressure here so your atmospheric air is sucked right in through the cap um, if this is clogged up and that vent's not working, what's going to happen is your carburetor is going to end up starving for fuel because fuel's not going to be able to go into the carburetor. Um, so what we're going to run is a vacuum test. We still have the same setup. I'm going to change this thing to vacuum. And when I hit the handle, you'll notice that our needle is not moving. It's not creating any type of vacuum. And the reason for that is the cap is venting properly. So everything looks good there. I passed like all three tests that I can do with the tank. And that means that this is a good tank and that is a bad tank. So I'm gonna have to switch that up and you know run full fuel lines and a fuel filter there. Uh, one other thing to note that's kind of interesting is that your particular carburetor is calibrated as far as the 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 proper air pressure for your tank. Um, there's a little spring inside the carburetor that uh, adjusts the, the needle up and down, and that spring is actually fine-tuned to the pressure inside your tank. So it's important that you use the right spring. You don't stretch that thing out or cut it down. Um, and if you have a leak here, that's why you can have a, like a fuel problem, and your, your engine will end up starving for fuel. So you know, like I said, I cleaned out the carburetor, thing wasn't work, so, uh, you know, hopefully this is the problem, and uh, we'll get this thing running. I'm going to run uh, one more pressure test on the entire engine, um, and uh, I'll show you that in the next video. So anyhow, I'm Double Wide 6, and uh, I have a bunch of small engine stuff. You should check out my channel if you're interested, and please subscribe. Thanks for watching.